Hello and welcome here to the Kyoto 250 qualifying day um, with quite some interesting stuff already happened. We've had the first pit stops here. Um, the qualifying races are having the format that you have to go to pit once to change all four tires. And this car we are looking at, that's the um, triple five of Sur. He hasn't done his pit stop yet as the only car on track and thereby he leads by nearly a whole lap. So rather an interesting tactic here. I'm very sorry that we are joining late here for this action. Um, we've had some technical issues um, that couldn't be solved in time. So. Uh, if you have some funny rainbows, uh, bow skies on the st st on the stream, then it's my system dying. Anyways, um, today with me here in the commentary booth, that's um, no one else as the ultimate German Im uh, invader. It is Dominic Engel. Hello. So, due to um, some further issues between the SP TV director and uh, LFS um, Exer, we will not have any overlays because they were all wrong and it's quite annoying to only show wrong overlays during such a long race. Well, yeah, for well, it's not too bad from what I can work out. All they're doing at the moment is well, turn left a lot. It's nothing that's really close or right well really close in oval turns that they're going side by side for position, but um yeah. Actually seems Robin Driscoll is as fast as the people behind him in seconds when he's all on his own, so I, I don't think they're gonna get any closer to him. Uh yeah, the caution or anything like that. It's nothing I really want to see because um, history teaches us if there's a caution in a XRT over race, uh, there are going to be more cautions and more and well, some more probably as well. Cautions breed cautions. Indeed. The old NASCAR wisdom also applying here to this race, um, although we've got um, about overall 10 cars less than NASCAR does in their over races. But anyways, uh, the track is still full. We're here at a nearly two mile super sp uh, at a two mile speedway. Um, three turns. Um, first two are banked with 20 degrees. The third turn is uh, 15 degree. So um, this also explains why uh, turn 3 is the most difficult turn with those cars. Because, um, well, actually um, these cars have two less downforce to go down to the, um, uh, well, to, uh, to the downline there. It only is used for some overtakes. Yeah, if you try and uh, do the low line in the last turn, you'll just die. <laughs> <laughs> basically, um, I think you're either on... Well, there are a few bumps in the last corner as well, that's also quite tricky. So, usually you end up just having an absolutely massive slide in these cars, and that just completely kills your tires, which don't even give you a lot of grip in the first place. So, don't want to do that, really. <laughs> Krasanowski uh, was just... Um... Well, he, he lost his uh, connection to the cars in front, which were um, the 58 of Blohoff and the 83 of Tao. You can see on the 83, I was mostly driving around in the draft. It's a right front tire is actually quite a bit warmer than the two cars in front of him. So, it's probably 
hurting him a lot. Well, it could be hurting him a lot if this stays green flag for quite some time. Well, we've seen in the past that um, especially the twin races are a lot cleaner than the actual Kyoto 250 race because um, this pit stop, this mandatory pit stop, which is mostly served on lap one, um, spreads out the field quite significantly and then, uh, well, you've got the rest of the race just your opponent in front and then you have to work on track with him. It's not like um, there's any big pack racing in those uh, twin uh, 115s. Well, yeah, most incidents are mostly caused by lag. Uh, and we don't seem to have any issues like that at the moment, so... Expect it to be clean-ish, so... So, as you see, um, we don't have any overlays today. Um, which makes it a bit problematic. We also don't have um, the tracker running because um, tracker also has its, itch, its issues. So it, uh, I think that are all the makings of a good um, of, uh, or of a great big, big, Kyoto 250 broadcast. Uh, uh, 83. Oh, uh, right off the back of the. Uh, 58 car. So uh, now I'm having an everything running properly here, uh, so we can give a little rundown here through the positions. So in first place we still have the triple five of Sur. Which, uh, who I believe is trying to pit on the last, uh, on the very last lap, because I've heard some last lap motorsports team communication earlier today, which indicates me that this might be possible. I'm not sure if if there's forced pit stop enabled by LFS, he's going to have a problem. Um, no, it is not because of this problem. Um, as long as he changes all four tires before crossing the start-finish line, it is uh, counted as veiled um, pit stop in terms of Kyoto 250 racing. So a little difference to the standard LFS rules, which seem to be very trickable. <laughs> I mean, safety cars and... Um, custom yellow flags and stuff like that, all that uh, are available nowadays and yeah, tricking out the Luffy speed system. <laughs> but I don't think that um, the tactic is actually any good because um, when Sir does make his pit stop, he will also have uh, to fall back quite significantly. And this could mean that he falls out of the um, top spots, which could mean he uh, would have to thrust into his qualifying time, which wasn't that well, if I remember it correctly. Another issue due to the failure of Tracker, we don't have any um, qualifying time, so <laughs> pretty, pretty nasty failure day today. The thing is, also, if there's a caution, he's he's basically a lap. Well, no, not he's not a lap down, but he's a lap, a lap ahead, and he's gonna be at least one and a half laps down when he yeah. gets a pit stop. Um, and the next car behind him, um, that's Robin Firstcops, and he uh, actually received the pole position in um, the qualifying session. And well, we can. Well, he's just racing for practicing because um, by earning the pole position in the uh, qualifying uh, means also that he automatically receives the um, pole position for the main race. For him, it's just like a, a 15th qu uh, practice session. 
yeah, but then uh, coal is in a in a way it's worth a lot, and in a in a way it's not worth a lot because um, it's over racing. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Yes, in a way um, it's worth a lot since he can, well, if he gets a good start like he did for this race earlier, and then it's an advantage to him because he's gonna be staying out of all the free wide stuff for the first two, three laps. But uh, if he gets a bad start, he might get swamped up and I don't know what could happen then, anything really. Very good point. He already won two of the practice session races, so um, I would call him one of the favorites for the race win next week. Yeah, sure. He's. I think he actually came on the podium as well last year, or at least in the top five. Yeah. If I recall correctly, I don't even know. It's a long time. Oh, well, that would be something to ask Speedo. I think he eventually lost his fight last did year. He, I think, did he actually... No, he didn't win, did he? No. <laughs> no, no, he didn't win. It was Phil. It was God. always Phil. Oh, yeah, it was Apart always Phil. Apart in the first year. <laughs> he, he never mentioned it either. Maybe we can get also Phil here up. Uh, he could deliver some expertise. Americans and turning left usually go together quite well. Could teach us a few lessons on how to win a race and how to be wrecked by your teammate on the pace laps, I guess, so... Yeah, both, um, he can tell you about both things. Actually remarkable, and one seems to be gaining time on, um, Robin Friskov. <laughs> yeah, he, he's really strong this year. As I said, he, he won two sessions already. Uh, compared to his teammate, Phil Diaz, um, that's one more. Because Phil just won one this year. Well, I'm not sure how he is, um, or how much he is into LFS still, so maybe that's a bit why. Because he's yeah, well, he never probably uh, not he that didn't used touch the car at all um, for the last 12 months. I think he said he's. I think he said that he didn't actually qualify for any of the practice sessions he did. <laughs> no, he just started from the back. But he said after it, I won because everyone else is stupid. Just like I think it was in 2010 when he said it. By the way, um, jumping back to fourth position, we've got a battle between Krzyzanowski and Teho. Krzyzanowski, a Polish man who also has quite a strong performance this year. It was remarkable um, how he... Um, ha his pace was remarkable in the Roval um, for the last couple of months. Uh, test sessions, sorry. Yeah, I guess if um, set up and everything comes together here, it's probably, well, for him it's, I guess, easier than some other tracks since he's using mouse. Of course, um, mousing is um, always rather difficult if you have different types of corners. Um, it's just, well, three different left handers, it is rather, uh, rather simple. I wonder if his wrist is gonna hurt after the race. Mm. <laughs> He's constantly getting, a, like, tiny little lag hits into every corner, which is not helping his speed. Like one of the down effects of bump drafting. <laughs> I 
it. I just thought off what would happen if he has like a wireless mouse and his battery runs out in the middle of a corner. Probably wouldn't be so good, so I hope I didn't jinx anything there. Well, I, I guess it would end, like, uh, end up like um, having a pop-up, so um, he keeps uh, on turning left and left and left and then, uh, well, uh, with his luck he is hitting some buggy barrier. They're not um, that buggy that's... anymore, so... Oh, well, um, depends. I, I mean, they are much better than in the last year, since the update, since uh, 06 point, uh, 0.6b, but still, if you hit it in a strange angle, you can get uh, uh, to, you can land up upside down. Still, we've seen it in some practice sessions. We've seen it plenty in races as well, not just in yeah, that's, <laughs> that's true. But we still have better tire physics than I racing. Because our look, our cars are doing full throttle and they're not flipping crazy. And there are not uh, some strange um, world holds suddenly <laughs> appearing. I think what the thing that's common with eye racing, I think after turn two, the cars are actually not touching the visual ground for a bit. Yeah, we're candy, by the way, in lab. Um, 27 so when uh, we're closing up to the halfway signal so still leading because he didn't stop and well he just drives and keeps on driving but the cut off is 12th place isn't it it's kind of freeway battle yes. for that a moment a more like a freeway battle for 11th but so uh, you're just uh, saying some true words there. We've got a cut here. The top 12, well, um, counting out uh, Robin Frisco because he's already qualified due to his pole position. Um, the top 12 will uh, advance into the race in their respective positions. For example, um, Sir, if he wins this race, he will be starting in third position. So, uh, second row inside. Um, Blohoff in third position in this race would start in uh, fifth position, so third row inside. Krzyznowski would be seventh fourth row inside and so on. So this race um, is all about the inside positions starting next week's main event. And the second race will be all about the outside positions. I guess it's gonna be well, I'm not. I'm not even sure. You. Know, I think some people will probably get the approach. I'll. I'll use this as another practice race because qualifying doesn't really matter. Um, in a race, I can take up to two and a half, three hours. So. Well, unless it's for like these kind of spots for 11, 12, 13, so on. Where you only want to get into the race just without any problems. There's also, for, no, it's not a freeway battle, but it's the leader is actually slipping back further and further because he was far closer to Robin Frisco like 15 laps ago than he was now. He's already down with eighth and ninth. So if you, uh, if I was him, I would make my pit stop now before, well, anything happens and there's a caution, for example. Well, his qualifying time was a 28.24, if I, uh, if I read the, uh, thanks to the chat here, right? Yes, a 28.24, um, thank you for, uh, for that uh, information. 48 um, uh, sorry? And then a 48.24, 28.24 is 48. like, <laughs> 30 seconds yeah. faster than we have one world record. <laughs> 
Well, I guess if um, I, I, I don't know suspicious. if you've seen um, Timo Hinian's, um next step on his uh, overlay program. He uploaded the video and um, he showed the AI driving around the oval. The AI did a uh, 30, uh, 39 point nine, if I, or a thirty one point nine, something like that, uh, in the BF one, um, and his inlay actually did show a thirty point oh nine. His magic. Yeah. But um, I guess we will have some more to come from that program. He did quite a m remarkable job. The, I had said that it was not used more often. Oh, we've got a yellow flag. Oh, this is going to be a caution, I guess. Safety car deployed because we've had um, rods and bar here. Say spinner on the front stretch. Yep, so, uh, his front end has been well modified and Sue will be a happy man and not only him also Robin Robin will um, receive the free pass and Sue oh well no he won't because he's in front who's uh, who's as well in front of Sue that would be the question I think everyone down to Six, seven was the first car behind the leader. So, <laughs> okay, that means um, the top seven will be on the lead lap while the rest was one lap down. Just thanks to Sur not pitting on lap one. The best thing is the first car lap down is his teammate. Yeah, and uh, the first car one lap down will receive the free pass. So uh, he will also be on the lead lap. How lucky is that? The un uh, most unlucky guy here is uh, Polinch in 8th position. He's not gonna get anything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he, he was di uh, close to that group, actually, but he was not able to get around. So it's very um, interesting watching that group, actually. They were... I've never seen someone slide around so many of them straight. <laughs> Truly amazing. And to be very serious about this, um, <laughs> actually, this means Sir uh, will advance into the race because uh, unless he crashes, he won't. Uh, pit lane is open, and Sir, so why does Sir not come in? That would have been green his chance. Green flag pit stop. Is it just a pit stop you have to make? Uh, yeah, a pit stop with all four tyres changed, but during it's the caution, you don't lose that much time! Oh, it had to be on the green flag, otherwise there would be no point of doing it on the Ah, one. right. <laughs> okay, sorry. I forgot about it. Green flag, still, yeah, sorry. <laughs> okay, that was my Wilco moment of the day. Hope it doesn't return too soon. Yeah, I kind of feel a bit guilty now because I said that's gonna happen, and well, it has. <laughs> Anyways, uh, well, let's take a, a view into the replay. I mean, we have this wonderful feature on this streaming machine, so we could use it. I actually have. A little suspicion what Robin Friscops has done here. His front tires were very hot and they were not that hot at any point earlier. I wonder if he's just seen the safety car deploy inside and then scrubbed his front tires a lot to get a bit uh, to get rid of a bit of tread. So we'll be um, back to normal temperatures again once the green flag uh, resumes. It's not something I would have thought of, actually. That's actually a very good idea if he's done that.
Okay, the biggest problem about replacing the first seed is to find the moment where it, something happened. Okay, um, he was bump drafting with the Nalik. Then he was traveling through turn 3. At the exit of turn 3 he was close to the Nalik. Then they bumped through the king. Oh, he hit the inside of the king due to a buggy, uh, to uh, due to a laggy bump. And then he spun around, caused the caution. Thanks to LFS cars being made out of diamond, he doesn't even have to pit for that. Just from above, uh, he, there was n really not anything to for him to do. So there we are back with live feed. Um, yes, you were right. By the way, I just looked it up. Um, green flag pit stops. It's gonna be very interesting. The leader is now. Just a meter or so in front of second place, and he hasn't pitted, so... Yeah... The five... No, six cars behind him, obviously, are... Um... For position. Yes, um... Interestingly, he... Drives a very inside line. I think this restart will be aborted. Because the... Uh, the, the, the leader shall be on the outside line. At the re oh, wow! Well, we restart. Oh, but he missed the gear change. He missed the gear change. Now instantly being swamped up by everyone. Robin Driscoll has been left behind a bit. <laughs> I've boxed in back there. If anyone wants to know why oh, we're racing this interesting, we see it. Mr. Braxisaur's mistake, uh, Frisco's gonna get back third place by turn three. Not if Raymond Blower has something to do. Oh, Spinner, Spinner's in the back. Is, oh, 69 again. Also, we have someone timing out, so that's 52 timed out, so. 52 timed out when he hit the wall, actually. And now something happened up in front. Blochov took the lead. Blochov in front of Krasnowski. It was quite a mix-up and a kind of midfield and back straight after turn two. Oh, and the onwards working. Don't okay. get too irritated by this funny, funny rainbow sky. Oh, the sky is amazing. <laughs> yeah, isn't it? I guess um, that's um, the sky of Doomsday. That's when we realize that we're also just part of a matrix or something. <laughs> <laughs> but what you saw in the replay as well is uh, the bump drafting. Really, it's a bump drafting. The camera's inside of the car in front. Uh, well, inspection, I guess. I'll call it. And uh, we see Robin working together with Polinch, who's uh, one lap down. Yes, he's got no. Well, he's not going to get another choice because uh, he needs some kind of partner to close back up with the top two again. Yeah, um, with um, the restart rules um, actually um, providing him the option of starting inside of the leader, um, but of course um, behind the leader. Ooh, oh. big bat. That's a big hit. Bit of bit of wishbone damage from Robin Frisco's there. That's probably not too good of a thing. 
uh, I want to say that um, he was supposed to start on the inside of um, our leader, of, uh, which was um, the triple five back then. But due to triple five starting very far left, he couldn't get really that advantage working. It would have been very entertaining to see all everyone squeeze into like one and a half lanes. But um, well, it probably wouldn't have ended in clean racing towards turn one. We're now in the 31st lap, entering lap 30, uh, 42, 41st and f uh, 42nd. We've got 18 laps to go and um, currently it really looks like that um, Krzyzanowski and Blahoff will actually um, race for the win of this um, first uh, how to call it um, twin 115 and that goes blow off to the inside he's so actually being out. held up he's got no chance from where he's at the moment he's being held up by a palinch out of every single corner Uh, that's a crucial part of um, drafting. If you don't have a partner with whom you really um, get something, some harmony on the track, you just fall back. You can be the fastest driver uh, in an oval car that ever lived. You can be anyone, but uh, when your partner just is, um, well, a Milkaduno, you <laughs> fall back down to the very last position. I think they um, started to work a bit better together again. A bit better now, yeah. A lot more contact sounds, which is, well, for the first time ever, that's a good thing. Ah, true. And also they um, profited from the overtake from Blahov because um, Cars running side by side are slower than cars running um, bumper to bumper. Oh! Eight in the wall. He's gonna get a full load of draft out of turn one. Always clips the wall a bit. This is gonna be a Robin Frisk. I was going straight to say no, eight blocks. And then it's. Um, to be honest, that's very intelligent by Frisk Ops. Because now he can start to bump away from Polinch. So the 77 might get away from uh, the 93. Obviously this time it is something good oh dear, that two, the two. numbers are that big on the cars. Very way bump draft. Ooh, bit of, bit of a nasty hit there. Eh? We've seen three-way bump drafts working in the little brother in the XRG in the oval. Just a couple of months ago. You can actually do the low line though in the XRG, can't you? In turn three, because it's so slow. <laughs> True that. But uh, we've seen qu uh, quadro drafts back then also. They were pretty scary to watch. Okay, I don't even want to know what happens now. It's going to be a four-way bumper. Usually when you cross the line of three to four, then it, things start to go wrong. And there goes Krasnowski again to the inside of um, Blov, retaking the lead, regaining the lead. Oh, and Blov runs wide. Ooh, actually had to break there. Oh, that you're gonna see any someone breaking on this track. Actually, there's only uh, there are two situations in which you are using the brakes really on this track. 
The first is uh, when you enter pit lane. The second is when you, uh, well, when you lost your drafting partner due to some issues and he's um, trying to catch up behind. Third one is when a flying car is coming towards you. But I haven't jinxed another thing, you know. Well, I guess most drivers will, um, will be driving like the old um, Nazca saying, don't try to avoid it, just race through it. <laughs> it's a bit of a problem when you're upside down flying. Okay, yeah, that's true. It is possible to go through a lot of things in LFS, not everything is solid. So, it's, well, it's still usable, that phrase. Oh, Raymond Blau now with a big speed advantage into T2. has quite some record. I mean, he won uh, Realistic NASCAR Security 400, which was end of July, uh, July, sorry, um, January. I think he was also in the last two 250s and Security 500s, if I remember. Yeah, he really made some progress in over racing. When he first entered, we thought, okay, another Luffer Speed driver who got uh, got bored by tracks, who's trying some he never tried before. But he really did. I mean, we've, uh, um, for example, concept racing and the, these races. Our safety car driver has <laughs> racing um, once two, I remember. I think you raced last year. So, um... And those oval races, um, by NDR especially, um, they're also a, a stage for drivers who are either specialists in those kind of races, or drivers who... Re yeah, well, oh, really get... Oh, that's oh. wide! Into bow off! Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. I think the hazard lights some sort of, um... Yeah, saying sorry in this case. Or 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 the overrated sensor a lot of swear words. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> but I think you could have seen on the stream the weakness of um mousing around the oval. If you don't hit the apex, you really have to struggle to get a proper line through the turn. While it's very easy to do and uh, with the wheel. Well, I guess. Well, as long as you use force feedback, at least you have a bit more um, feedback what the front wheels are doing and where the car's got to go with my mouse. I guess that's a bit well, a bit numb. What I'm saying, you can't feel the car for shit, and you just got to run on knowing where you have to turn in and how much you have to turn in. On board here with um, First Cops. I love those guys. <laughs> yeah. I, I even changed uh, the sky files and it still didn't change in my LFS, so I don't know what to do next. Um, we see also the number plates, which has been used in the past for communication between drivers. Yeah, yeah, I, I remember. <laughs> but obviously, no one doing that until now. At least from what I can see. Well, um, Bloff just um, is honoring uh, Super Jig, uh, Marco Simoncelli, who died uh, last year in real life racing. Um, 
Kronowski is providing his first name on his number plate. <laughs> Scott is providing a lol plate. Going through the order, I'm f uh, fourth place, Terho. What's he doing? <laughs> He's working with the 44 of Sjöblum. Ah, he still hasn't um, sent us the way how to pronounce his name, I guess. <laughs> Ooh, ooh, I have to say it, eh? But the uh, Terra has got the best team name of all of the of all of the people in this race, I suppose. Yeah, he is part of um, that one stunt team. I think it's got Master Team Drivers Zero Extreme or something. <laughs> yes, yeah, something like that. Uh, I know that um, one or two drivers are also racing in City Liga, and then uh, that was the first contact of mine f to this team. Of course, uh, one of um, their drivers is Unknown Master, if I recall it correctly. Yes, he is. <laughs> So quite a famous, um, f at least no, 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 he's famous, not famous. Uh, personality. He's unknown. He's unknown, Master Twenty One. He's not famous. Okay, he, he's unknown. If he became famous, his whole name would be completely, well, just rubbish. Because well, it's not worth much anymore, is it? Uh, well, yeah, could be true. It's true, actually, even. Um, sixth, uh, fifth place, sorry, uh, sorry, uh, Matt Kingsbury. The Kingsbury, uh, guys, Kingsbury's actually had a funny moment, um, during the practice session. One practice session, there were only two drivers, and both were named Kingsbury. Oh, how much would I love to have been there? There was even a caution. Oh god. Um well back to the guys in front I guess. They are uh, most entertaining. Trying to work together too wide. Something we also have seen here uh, in the past years of a couple of three white. Whoa! Oh. Bit of loose action. Oh, oh, oh! oh the car, yellow car. It's again 69. But 69 has completely. 69's rolled over. Look at that roof. Yeah, he must have. He hasn't rolled. He's. What the hell? Oh, and he's driving into the wall on the straight. Did he have a collision with 39? He must have had. Look at the right from damage of 39. Yeah, uh, let's take a look at the replay. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. That right front damper is like impossibly not broken. Almost. It's 95% orange on the damage bar. Is it the cars were already <laughs> looking very bad when uh, this incident happened. Ooh, and third uh, almost spins into 69, so waiting for the pit lane to be open, driving around. Not very quickly, obviously. Oh, because one has oh yeah, he rolled over. And he was lucky. He was simply lucky that... Well, yeah, that, that one is a... A very rare role, what he's done, just being nosed into the wall and then just flipping because someone pushes you on the side, but it kind of only happens here. That would have been something for Auntie, for Teho, for his yeah, own team. He would have flipped out of the track four times and come back with no damage. On board now with um, the 69. It's going to be an amazing on board, really. Three 
with your life, Carney, because you could learn a lot from this. Just look at the roof structure of the XRT. He hasn't even got a roll cage and it barely got squashed in. Yeah. I guess um, there will be many people still living if uh, Eliphas' inventions would be taken into the um, mass production of cars. I don't, I don't think so. If, I think they would still be killed because of the G-force because <laughs> there's no crumb preserve. Just like boom and you have like 20 G at once. I think you'd have, yeah, neck would probably just break. Uh, yeah, with no hands it's, <laughs> it could happen, yeah. Just would have to ask, um, for example, Mika Hakingen. Remembering his um, crush at um, Adelaide. I so wonder actually would... if 69 could drive on without damage. Theoretically, it shouldn't affect it too much. Unless he's got positive right to the camber, which he has, so everything I just said is invalid. 39 uses their own pit lane entry. <laughs> so, our situation for the race that we do have Robin Friscops in the lead. Robert Friscops has actually got something really nice that no one else has in the field from what I can see. It's really helped him with that um, axis handbrake he has because it's just like spooling up your tur turbo with the normal brake but no one else can see it because the brake lights obviously aren't on. Wow, exploring your lift with speed can deliver you such options. And now if uh, Fulias would listen to us in the stream he would um, he would kind of be interested in that. So the Kyoto Win one fifteen number one will be finished on a short sprint. Oh, I just realized that actually. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so actually on one lap. A one lap uh, sprint for the uh, yeah. A typical and the finish. One lap. Green white. Oh, and look at the Kingsbury coming, diving down the inside. Oh, <laughs> that could have ended very badly if he had just a little bit less room there. The Kingsbury's doing a kind of a Keith here on the final lap. Already Wrecking in second position. Mad Kingsbury knocking on the door of Fiskops. And someone's actually going for the pit lane. Oh yeah, 555 is going for the pit lane now. It's a bit late, son. It's not like it matters there. Around the outside. He's got the better momentum on the outside line. Three wide, onto the straight. Four wide even, four wide, nearly. It will take it. Eight. Photo finish, it will be a photo finish. No, it won't be. It will be number eight winning oh, the race. It's <laughs> Robin Fritzko. Oh, Robin Frisco's going fast in reverse in about half the field is at the moment. Oh dear, what a finish! Car with the second, so it's fast slap finish for second. That's so. just the third slowest fastest lap, sorry. Or fourth, or... Well, not a fast lap. Piatek uh, Krzyzanowski, the man from Poland, wins the first of two 
um, Kyoto 115, uh, twin 115 races. And thereby he is second, uh, third on the grid in next week's main event. Great effort, but also great effort by Kingsbury, really. <laughs> Must say, because uh, that was some... Yeah, I, I don't know how to call it. I mean, from first, uh, from from fifth, I'm guess uh, fifth or f sixth even, up to second position. Dear, that was a bit. Well, unusual, I guess. Yes, it was. <laughs> so I saw with his magical strategy has made it in, actually, even though I thought he was going to finish dead last. Doesn't. So the first one is in the books, the second one is coming up in a bit. Yeah. Watching the funny sky all over Kyoto these days. So, um, the results here from race one. Um, we've got Piotrek uh, Krzyzanowski in first position after nearly one hour, uh, hour of driving time, including the pace laps. Second is Matt Kingsbury from, from Last Lab Motorsports. Third, Western Wolves, Robin Fresh Cops. Fourth, um, we've got Rem Blahoff from Speedo Racing. Fifth is um, Teho, Anti Teho from the stunt team. Ah, uh, dumb, said their name earlier, so I forgot. <laughs> It ah, well. Then we've got Pulinch from um, Player Zone in seventh position. Eighth is um, the triple five of Sur. Mm. Well, last at most sports also. Yeah, um, he really profited f especially from the last caution because <laughs> he was promoted. Uh, we, he was still on the lead lap and was able to do a final pit stop. Then we've got uh, in ninth place Martin Capel, our Banham swinging moderator. So he's in the race. Uh, Mathieu Blum also advances into the race, and Robin Krumpusch, the last car to actually. The last racer to be actually in the Kyoto 250 race by his race performance. Um, Rotzenberger, Hammond, and Braxata are completing the results table. Those three have to um, advance into the race via the qualifying time 
Um, to be honest, that's not too big of an issue because um, we've only had 33 cars posting a qualifying lap. And, well, oof, it could be that they are still in next week's Kyoto 250. Also, I feel like I should correct myself since I said um, Tero had the best team name. No, Oscar Hardwick has the best team name. Oscar, um, tell me. I think, tell he, us. Think, I think he called his team Hurt McDerping Racing or something like that. Hurt McDerping Racing? Um, yes. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I think I think their team logo could just be a, a screenshot of the sky texture today. Yeah, <laughs> I, I was joking to myself, I'm um, not um, being on air with it, but as Kyoto rings in Japan, maybe this simply might be um, the fallout. <laughs> <laughs> well, you never know. Could be anything. Could be anything. <laughs> Very bad joke. I apologize to all uh, Japanese viewers. I know it might be a bit uh, early for such jokes. But, anyways. If the world can't laugh, the world would be dead. Oh, it's gotta go down anyway, so not really like it matters. No, it's 22nd of December is, well, the day. E, uh, okay. I'm actually trying to look up Oscar Hart's team name now because I'm pretty sure I got it wrong. Um... I do feel it's worth it, so... Actually, we're using this little break to look up last year's results. I'm just showing you out there how to advance to the results, which is um, as, uh, well, Speedo database is not really up to date. <laughs> um, a bit more complicated than usual. Yeah, actually, I, I have to apologize again. I got Oscar Hardwick's team name wrong. Not Herb McDerping, uh, McDerping Racing, it's Dirt McHerping Racing. Ooh. Two letters, and it's so easy. So, um, actually, the easiest way is if you are on the Speedo database. Um, homepage, then you go to recent events. Uh, on the second page, there. Oh, uh, sorry, uh, competi uh, competitions and then recent. There you find. Still on the second page. New Dimension Racing, um, in this case it was GT2 World Series, which, uh, by the way, will, will return and which, by the way, will also um, open sign up soon, so take a look into our forums. Um, New Dimension Racing. Then you've got all events of uh, New Dimension Racing um, shown to the right side, then you click on Q2 250. So yeah, um, this, these are the results of the fourth 
annual, so last year's Kyoto 250, Phil Diaz won in front of um, Sim, uh, of, uh, yeah, Sim Cattell. And your yeah, Italian Kenneth O'Keefe in fourth place, Oscar Hardwick in uh, fifth place, and Pilsa de Bexa then was Joe Holmes. Um, who would have guessed? I don't think that's of high relevance, really. Looking through the field, um, who is also racing today, um, in 8th place, um, Jan Lapra, what? You already Robin. seen Matt Kings? Yeah, Matt Kings in 9th. S uh, Stephen Martin in 10th, back then. Also, um, 11th, um, David Junt. 12th, um, Bertel Holmberg. 13th, Martin Capel and Roman, uh, Raymond Blauhoff back then was only 14th. So looking at the top 20 Um, there are still 15 of the uh, of them racing today, uh, or in the Kyoto 250 itself. Usually, I think actually some people who've done all Kyoto 250s up to now, all four, and now the fifth one as well. Well, first name there would be, um, of course, Phil Diaz. Yeah, exactly. Speedo database also delivers us that information. So, um... It's actually a secret app for the, the uh, Speedo database. Uh, what do you mean? Like, are we, like, promoting it? <laughs> no, well, maybe if more people are... are there... maybe it gets updated again. <laughs> but to be honest, it's uh, one of the best resources to um, get leak racing stats. So, driver records, um, the most fans um, were Phil Diaz, Kenneth O'Keefe and uh, JJ Wang. Yeah, I completely forgot about him, but he is not here this year, so... Yes, uh... And was Kenneth O'Keefe, so... So Phil Diaz will be the Ever record holder. Kyoto 250. Done all the 250s. It's yeah, a lot true. of left turning. JJ Wang is concentrating nowadays on some R factoring. Um, so is David John, but um, David just jumps back for the one or the other event to live for speed. Speaking of Phil Diaz, yeah, he is, and so is the person who usually is never there because he's BRB. So we will see the initial warm-ups, well, so to speak, 
and this race will also ha feature some inlays, overlays. It's got working again. <laughs> Yay! This race could be actually a bit more interesting than the first Twin 115. Don't know why though, just have a, the feeling it will be. Well, we've got the three-time champ in the race. We do have um, Oscar Hardwick, um, the one who finished fourth last year. We do have... Um, we do have Lukas, uh, uh, yeah, Too many the ninety-seven <laughs> vowels. <laughs> I will only call him Lukas, so that's the easy part of his name. It starts with P A and then ends with K, and the bit between that is impronounceable for me. Yeah. <laughs> it's a Z, a C, a Z, a Y, and a K. Directly followed after each other. <laughs> Just taking, uh... Another look at the data base. So in the past four runnings we've had uh, 104 different drivers. I'm right in saying that last year's was the longest ever Kyoto 250. Mm. Was that the 09 one? It was the 09 one. Yeah, because I remember the 09 was absolutely catastrophic. Yeah, we covered it back then also on NDR TV. We even have it still in uh, the on-demand section, so you might want to take a look, or better not. And uh, back then, Wilco... Um, yeah, Wilco, Paso and me were commentating. And we've really had some moments where we just wanted to leave, <laughs> because there were so many cautions. Oh, there weren't any, I don't know what you mean. Uh -huh. About 20. It's only about a third of what a usual iRacing oval race has. Um, that's... <laughs> yeah. But it's iRacing, and you know that a usual... Uh, a, an average lift speed broadcast is still much better than um, Peace RTV's uh, iRacing World Championship coverage. I couldn't, well, disagree with that as much as I would want to, if I wanted to, but, well, I just didn't disagree with that. <laughs> Their problem is just they have a really interesting series, and they just completely make a hash of broadcasting it. Yeah. Um, what I have in mind, for example, um, race one, of the Road Coast World Championship this year this year oh, wait, where, no um, one could challenge Gregor Hootie except for all the people that timed out that were right behind him oh right but also um, the incident to which happened to um, Hugo Lewis first he, he, first he was pronounced 
uh, Hugo Luis. Oh, Louis, dear. like in French, and then um, <laughs> after that um, they didn't. Well, uh, they just said something happened to him and didn't show replay, didn't show um, his car, um, didn't show that he had to retire. He just uh, they just said, "Hey, something happened to him." Nothing's more important than the existence of Gregor Hutu watching him drive around doing really nothing. <laughs> yeah. That's a oh, four-way battle for second. Oh no, but Gregor Hoot is all there on his own, 30 seconds away in the lead. Gotta watch him instead. Oh, yeah, you want to so start? Maybe something about this will change, but well. But we're just so much better. We have a weird flat oval. We have no walls. People get stuck in. We have. Uh, better sky textures. <laughs> yeah, especially better sky textures. So, guys, uh, if you're watching the first time ever a Live for Speed stream, or you're watching the first time ever Live for Speed at all, don't rely on my sky textures because they were broken and they couldn't be fixed. I guess they could look worse. Um, it could look I worse if the mountains uh, file. If the mountains weren't there, it would. How do you just? Have you tried turning the sky off in the graphics options? Oh well, some lab <laughs> experiment here. <laughs> Let's try if this works. If it works, you're my hero. Then we will have the day. ultimate uh, uh, global warming. We don't even have a sky, we just have climate. Oh! Okay. Problem fix, you're my hero. <laughs> if it gets boring, we'll put it back on again. <laughs> yeah. Some psychedelic, um, amazing. Well, we should play some, um, play some Pink Floyd it. music yeah, exactly. when we turn it on. It plays, like, ads on it. That's, that's a stupid thing, you could, in this game, you could actually change all the text just to be sponsors' logos. <laughs> oh, yeah, you can. <laughs> It's not. It's quite a good thing about this game. I remember when it came out um, that it was um, also advertised as a huge advantage that um, you can do your own skins, you can advertise yourself, your team, and some stuff like that, and you also can do your own adverts. Yeah, you still can. Just I guess LFS isn't as big of a hit um, for people who actually sponsor things anymore. Uh, it, it was quite big. I mean, um, we've had a, c a couple of um, professional series like uh, ESL in the back or um, or STCC or ETM, I think as well. ETM, yeah, was also a professional league. Or the ones where you actually didn't win anything like MOE, but still just Emily well, never uh, had a sponsor actually <laughs> but still oh uh, well um uh if i remember it correctly as car racing when it existed had plantronics that's was one of the main ones not sk yeah, but uh, SK was a Krana and they also carried Think over that a, a sponsor. SK deal. had um, Intel and AMD later, they didn't have Biotronics, I think. Oh, could be. And that's a long time ago, we're talking about yeah. 2008 here. <laughs> yeah, um, 
this game also has a long history. It even it even this. has seen some live broadcasts on, uh, or at least some race broadcasts on real television back in a few years ago when it was part of ESL. Um, the German television um, actually covered ESL races uh, on their um, real television screens. I guess oh. that is an achievement that um, iRacing still has not done yet. Oh, well, it's, I guess they could probably do it, but... Um... Yeah, okay. Uh, let's uh, do a quick restart of the stream. Um, you will see the offline uh, for some seconds. Same then... colored light in the sky, but in stripes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> True that. <laughs> okay, uh, see you in seconds. <laughs> 